Okay, so last time we were here, we began our look at how to draw straight lines, graph straight lines, and we did that by using that slope-intercept form. Does anyone remember what it looks like? Y equals MX plus C, okay? Oh, you can't see them. There you go. How's that? Slope and descent form. Y equals MX plus C. All right? Now, where M is the what? Slope or gradient. Good. And remember, you just count that out as rise over run. And C is the Y of the Y intercept. It's the point zero C. Right? Practice what? <clears throat> Not today. Yeah, but we will, yes. Okay, so, all right, hold on a minute. We've got one other. And we also learned how to do it, how to graph using a chart. Now remember, the chart is the one that is the, the um, it'll do it always kind of thing, right? Hold on, just, yes. Okay, we'll get you one, hold on. All right, so remember the chart. You're just going to have some X values and some Y values. You choose any values you want to for X and then put it into the equation to find out what Y is going to be, and then you can graph that way. They gave you four or five of them. You need a minimum of what? Five. Of four. three. Three. There you go. Because if you do one wrong, they won't line up. Right? So you'll know that you've made a mistake. Okay? All right. So hold on. Just one second. We, we didn't actually look at one like that, but that's okay. It says y equals 5. Now, they still give you a chart of values, right? Yeah. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or something like that? Yeah, 0. One, but, yeah. Oh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah. Now, but what does the equation say about y? When is it five? All the time. Always. So in th this is a special case of equation. If you have y equals five, then y equals five no matter what x is. Who cares? So x can be anything. Y just has to stay five. All right? And we're going to see these again today. I didn't think they gave them to you this, this early. So what if I have x equals three? When does x equal three? All the time. Doesn't matter what, x has to be 3, which means I can use anything for y. Who cares? Okay. But then okay. what do you do for the points? Well, these are the points. They're like one, five, two, five, Right? So it doesn't matter what you, because you, in this one you have no x, and you're going to see what kind, you're going to see what that does to the line. Uh, so what you do to the line, well, you can already see if you want to. 1, 5 is to the right 1, up 5. 2, 5 is to the right 2, up 5. 3, 5 to the right 3, up 5. What's happening? It's just going to be a line. A, hor a horizontal line. Yeah. And look at these. 3, 1, over 3, up 1. Like 3, 2 line. to the... Is 3, 3? What's happening? Undefined. Well, that's the slope is undefined, but... The line is just a vertical line. Okay? Those are two special cases of lines, a horizontal line and a vertical line. And there's our section on those, and so that's why I wasn't expecting them to happen quite yet. Yes? And then also the next question, number six, says y equals negative x. Okay. So y equals negative x. So is it just... Yeah, so when you have your x values and your y values, what did they give you? Zero, one, two, three, four. Was this a chart one or just or the slope intercept form one? Um, this thingy. Oh, so I gave you a chart. Okay, right. Okay, so you just plug it in. Y equals negative zero, which is zero. Y equals the opposite of one, so that's negative one, right? Just remember, anytime you replace a, you replace a letter with a number, you always put it in parentheses, and that'll show you what you need to be doing. 
Wait, so in the eight, so we put negative oh no, we just put zero, and then you put negative one. Oh, it for your y values. Wait, yeah, but what do we put in the this one? Okay. Hold on, let me come look. So those are two methods of graphing using the chart, which is kind of the workhorse. It always works, right? If they give you numbers or you choose your own numbers, it doesn't matter. That always works. Now, the, y, the slope-intercept form where you have the y equals, remember that one, so if it's y equals 2x plus 1, for example, that's where we're going to find the y-intercept, and that's the point 0c, right? So 0, 1. And then we need the slope. Slope is always found where? In front of the x. And it's 2, so we want that as a fraction, so that's 2 over 1. But remember, in order to do that, it has to have y on one side completely by itself. Okay? So we just plot 0, 1, which means go over 9 and up 1. And then count from that, we're just going to count rise over run from that point. Now, of course, my graph is just a sketch, so I'm not going to get it exactly. Hold on just one second. But it goes up to and then to the right one. And now that I have my two points, I can draw my graph, my line all the way through it. Remember those? Yes. Just a question about the line going all the way through. Mm -hmm. It's always. Always. It has to go all the way through. With arrows, right? And arrows are better, but as long as you stretch it all the way to the end, at one edge to the other, the arrows are assumed. Oh, okay. Now, if you do this, it's wrong, right? It's got to continue all the way from one end to the other. But if you stop there and use arrows, yeah. that would be the same. Uh, yeah, it's ugly. Don't do it. Okay. It should really stretch all the way from one end to the edge to the other. Okay. Yeah, what she's saying is, can you just stop in the middle and put arrows? Technically, yes. Grade-wise, not gonna be not gonna be happy. Okay. All right. So those are two methods. But remember, we said there were three methods we were going to look at. And so today, what we're going to do is look at the third method for graphing a line, and that is graphing using the x and y intercepts. Now this method is really good. It's really fast. It's a kind of a way of using the chart. Okay? But you're going to make a special chart with only two values on it. So the first step Make a chart, and we've already talked about what intercepts mean. Intercepts is where intercepts are the places where the line crosses the axis. So the x one is where it crosses the x-axis. The y one is where it crosses the y-axis. We've discussed the inter the idea of an intercept just where it crosses. So you're going to make a chart, okay? But then you're going to choose two values. You're going to choose x equals 0, and you're going to choose y equals 0. So this is a little bit different chart. We're going to choose an x value, and we're going to choose a y value. But what are those x's and y values? 0, because they're the easiest numbers to work with. Now, the reason we use this method is it's sometimes difficult to solve an equation and get the y by itself. With this method, you don't have to. You can just use the chart and go, right? Because if you have a lot of times, when you, if you solve for y, you're gonna end up with a bunch of really ugly fractions that you don't want. So you can just use this method instead. After you choose those values, just solve. to get the two points, the two. And two points is really all you need in order to be able to graph a line, as long as you do your math right, <laughs> okay? 
Now, this one works almost always, but not quite always, because sometimes you'll get, you'll find that the x and y intercept are the same point. So in other words, you get the, you get zero, zero, which is called the, what? Starts with an O. The origin, yes, you bet, there you go. So it's called the origin. And if that's the case, if you get zero, zero here and zero, zero there, that's only one point. Is that enough information to draw a line? No. So in that case, I'm gonna need to choose a third point. So choose a third point if you get zero, zero. That's the only time you have to. Most of the time you're just choosing two points. So this is the fastest, easiest way to graph a line most of the time, okay? All right, so. You plug the zero into the place of the X and, and work it out just like we did the, with the other charts. It's just a chart just like the others. We'll look at some examples, hold on just a second. Okay, so what two numbers am I gonna choose? X equals what? And then the second point is going to be zero. y equals zero, right? One of them an x value, the other a y value. But, and usually that gives you two points, which is plenty to draw a line. What happens if they, both, if they both end up being the same point? Then you have to choose a what? A third, a third, all right, a third point, a third x value, I'm sorry. A third point, which just means pick any x value and work it out, okay? So let's look at some examples, and I'm going to go to your homework, um, your, your book to look at these examples so that they look like what you see. Sorry, it takes a minute. There we go. So using the x and y intercepts. So if you look at this equation that they have here, 4x minus 3y equals 24. It's not, is y all by itself on one side? No. Now, we could get it on one side by itself without too much trouble, but would it be easier just to get the point straight from the equation the way it is? Yes. Okay? And we can do that by using the intercepts. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to make my chart, and I'd usually just use a cross for this, um, and... I'm going to choose how many values? Three. I only need two to start with, right? X equals what? Zero. And Y equals what? Zero. Now, I may need a third point, but right now I don't, I don't know for sure. I don't know if I do or not, okay? So the first time, what I'm going to do is plug in X equals what? Zero. So it's just, and this is what I mean by solve. Four times zero minus three Y equals 24, because x is zero. So all I did was, that's what I mean by solve. You just plug in the x equals zero, and then do the math. Now, what's gonna happen to four times zero? It's gonna go to zero. Right, in other words, the x term is simply gonna go away. So it's just gonna be negative three. Well, it's negative three y equals 24. And how do I solve that? Negative three y means what operation? Negative three is, y is negative three times y. And to solve an equation, you do the opposite. What's the opposite of multiply by negative three? Divide by, no, just whatever you're dividing by. And, and, and here's the reason why we won't, don't want it to be positive. We want the negative and the three to divide away. What's that gonna leave me with on this side? Y. Over here, a positive divided by a negative is a negative, And 24 divided by three is? Eight. So what is y equal? Negative eight. If x is zero, y equals negative eight. Right. So what you're doing is you're simply plugging in the number you know and then solve the equation to find the number you don't know. Okay, using the x and y intercepts. Now I'm going to do the same thing, but this time I'm going to put what in place? Y equals zero. So that's 4x 
Minus 3 times 0 equals 24. Nice, because what's going to happen when you take negative 3 times 0? Okay. All right. That's all right. Write it down. So all I've done is in place of the y, I put the number I chose, which was 0. Okay. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Because we've already used x is, x is 0. What's going to happen to negative 3 times 0? Why is 0? Because that's just the numbers you choose. You always choose x equals 0 and y equals 0. You always choose those two numbers. Let me write it on a blank page. It'll make your life easier. That's why I want to write it on a blank page. Hold on. It's 24. It's the same equation. Okay. Hold on. We're, we're, hold on, guys. Hold on. Think about the rules. All right. So what did we have? It was 4x minus 3y equals 24. All right. Now we're going to graph it using the intercepts. So the first step is make a chart. Right? So I'm going to make a chart. The chart has x values and what? Y. X, y values. Right. Okay. Second, choose x, make x equal 0 and what? Y equals 0. And y equals 0. That's just the method. You don't even have to think about it. There is no reason why. Or, but the reason why is because those are the intercepts. But what we're doing is just, you're always going to choose those two numbers. You never even have to think about it. So x is going to be 0 on the first point. y is going to be 0 in the second point. Wait, why are you not If you put them side by side, you're telling me that x and y equals 0. That's not true. We're going to do, we've got to find out what x is. So don't put them side by side. We, need, we have to get two, two distinct points out of it. Okay? Okay. In order, and so that means I'm going to have two points. Each one of these is going to give me a po a, another point on the graph, right? But, it, but each point has to have an x value and a what? Y value. A y value. Okay? Now, so what I'm going to do for the first one is, in place of the x, I'm going to put what number? Well, what does it say? Zero. So 4 times 0 minus 3y equals 24. Right? All I did was replace the x with what number? Zero. Okay? We're redoing it because I, was, I want it written bigger on. All right, now, what's going to happen to 4 times 0? What's 4 times 0 going to make? Zero. So in other words, the x term is simply going to be eliminated. And that's always going to happen. That's why this is such a great method. Now, all I need to do is get the y by itself. Is the y by itself right now? No. no. That negative 3 is connected to it with what operation? Negative 3y. Negative 3y. If they're stuck together side by side, that indicates what operation? Times. Times or multiply, right? And so you're doing the, when you're solving an equation, moving things from across the equal symbol, you do the opposite. What's the opposite of multiply? Uh -huh. Yeah. So the opposite of multiply by negative 3 is to divide by negative 3. Say the whole thing, and that way your mind will grasp grasp it a little better. The negatives will divide away. The threes will divide away. What does that leave me with on this side? Y. y. On the other side, positive divided by a negative is a? And 24 divided by 3 is 8. So if x is 0, what did that make my y value become? Negative 8. Okay. Now I'm going to do the same exact thing. But this time it's not x equals 0, it's what? What letter does it say? Y'all are making this harder than it has to be, guys. Just read it. What, what is what, The next one is y equals 0. Yeah? Okay? Now, so 4x minus 3 times 0 equals 24. Are we getting violent? Sorry. It's all right. So, why did I put a zero after the three? Because you replaced y with 
because I'm replacing y with 0. Do you see it? But yeah? negative 3 times 0 is 0. Which is the whole point. <laughs> because that's going to disappear. That's what I want to happen. Wait, so hang on. So you don't do both. You have to do them one at a time. You choose which one you want to do. You always have to, you always, in the chart, you always had to do each one at a time, right? No, 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 it's not fine. Hold on, hold on. Okay, now, it's equals, it's 4x equals 24. Is the x by itself? No. How is it co connected to the 4? It's time. Multiplication, and the opposite of multiply by 4 is? Divide by 4. But remember, whatever you did one side, you do exactly the same to the other. The 4s will divide away, and what's 24 divided by 4? So if y is 0, what does that make my x have to be? Six. Now do I have two ordered pairs? What are they? Zero. Zero minus eight. And what's the other one? Six, zero. Okay. Now, can I plot those points on a graph? Yeah, where's zero not minus eight gonna be? Down here somewhere? Six zero is gonna be the right six and up none. And that's enough information to draw a line. And I knew it was gonna slope, <clears throat> I knew it was gonna slope up because the number in front of my X is positive. <coughs> Excuse me, choking on a date. All right. We're done? Okay. So we're going to look at several more of these. You must understand what's happening. So focus with me. Don't give up. Don't do something else. Don't talk to your neighbor. Focus with me, guys. If you shut down, you're not going to understand it, and you're not going to be able to pass this section. If you can't do this, then you cannot move on. Okay? So stay with me. All right? Can we do that? Okay. The more times you see it, I'll do it as many times as we need to. The more times you see it, the more likely you are to understand it. Okay. So 5x plus 4y equals 120 is the next one. We're going to do it on, we're going to do it with paper. Okay. So 5x plus 4y equals 20. I want to graph using the intercepts. Okay. So the first step is to make a what? Chart. chart. My chart is going to have x values and what? Y values. Y values. Get everybody there. Is everybody there for me? Okay, right? Now, I'm going to choose two values to put in the chart. X equals what? Zero. And what's the other one? Zero. Y equals zero, you can't just say zero. So, X equals zero, and then what's the second point gonna be? Y, y equals zero. They are two distinct points, right? So don't put them on the same line because if I put them on the same line, what you've just done is told me that the point, the answer is zero, zero, and that's not true, right? So you can't put them on the same line, okay? And if you want to, if you want to separate it even further and make a true chart out of it, if that helps you, do it, okay? Now, third, solve using each one, okay? So what is my first value that I'm going to be using? Zero. And I'm gonna put it in place of the what? Five. Eh. X. X, there you go. Well, it was like yeah, next to the five. I get it, I understand, but you know my job is to make you say it right. Yeah. Sorry. All right, so five times zero plus four y equals 20. 
The only thing that changed is I put zero in place of the X number, right? Yeah. Does everyone agree? Now, the reason why that's so good is what is five times zero? zero. And because I have this over, the four Y over here, I just can get rid of it. Okay, now I need to solve it, right, by getting that y, that 4 away from the y. It's 4 times y. What's the opposite of multiply by 4? Divide by 4. Over here, the 4s will divide away, and that gives me y equals what number? 5. So, if x is 0, what does that make my y become? 5. So my first point is zero, five. Now I'm gonna do the same exact thing, but this time I'm gonna put zero in place of which letter? Y. The Y, right? We already put zero in place of X. That's always the first step. Now I'm gonna put zero in place of the Y. So five X plus four times zero equals 20, right? All I did was in place of the Y, I put a zero which I love, why? Four times zero makes zero, which is nothing. That's the beauty of this part of this, of this system. There's no math to do there. But I've got to get that five away from the x. Right now it says five times x. What's the opposite of multiply by five? Divide both sides by five, good. The fives will divide away on that side. Really makes a one, but you don't need one x, right? And what's 20 divided by five gonna make? Four. four. So what's x equal? Four. four. That gives me two distinct points or ordered pairs. The first one is zero comma five, and the second one is what? Four comma zero. I think I actually did this. Excellent, you see? I knew, I knew you would. Just take me, it's fine. Okay, now. All I need to do is plot those points on the graph, which means I'm gonna have to go away from this page. So does everybody have the, this, these ordered pairs written down? Okay, so I'm gonna have to go away from the page to get to the graph paper. All right, here we go. Oh, I wrote, I wrote a different problem than they wrote. I didn't write 120, I wrote 20. But it's all right, who cares? So my p ordered pairs were what? <laughs> It was uh, zero, oops, sorry. Darn it, I just turned everything blue, it's sorry. Zero, five, and four, zero. So let's just plot it on this graph here, even though it's the wrong one. Zero, five means go right or left how many? Right. None. And up what? Five. Five. And they're counting in fives on this one, so that's why it went there. Four, zero means go where? To the right, four, and then up or down, how many? None. None. So it's right there. Then, draw my line all the way from one edge of the graph to what? The other, the other edge. Right? All I did was plot the points and then draw the graph. All right. Now, I want you to see, those of you I know, guys... The point where the line is crossing the X and Y axis. So this, this point is which intercept? That's the X intercept, excellent. This point is which intercept? The Y intercept, okay? And for the X intercept, can you, you can go right or left, but you can't, if you can't stay on the x-axis, if you go what? Up or down. So that tells you that the y value has to be zero. Guys, you gotta know this. Now, for the other one, for the y-intercept, we can go up and down, but we can't go what? Left or right. So that means x has to be zero. And then whatever y value, it, y is, it's y, okay? You've got to know which one is which, and you have to know how to find those values because not all graphs we're gonna do are gonna be linear. Later, we're gonna work with graphs that look like this, 
and graphs that look like this. And you're going to have to be able to tell me what the intercepts are. And if you can't, then you're not going to be able to solve the problems. Okay? So you, we have to start here with the simplest ones. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you another graph. And I just want you to tell me what the intercepts are and which one's which. So we'll just scroll this up. All right. So looking at this graph at the bottom here where they have the line, it's the one we were supposed to be graphing, but I messed up numbers. The x-intercept is where? On the top or at the bottom? The bottom. The bottom. The y-intercept is on the top up there. Okay. So in this one, this is a really typical case where you have X and Y, but it's only the positive area of the graph. And that's really typical because most of the things that you work with are going to be positives. For example, if you're talking about number of people, can you have negative people? No. So we can't talk about it like that. If you're talking about money, well, we hope we don't make negative amounts, right? We don't want negative amounts. We want positives. If we're talking about profits, right? Okay, we can have losses, but we don't want that. If you're talking about the number of birds, can you have negative birds? No. So many, many times your graph is limited to just that one quadrant, the positive quadrant, right? And that's why many times you'll see that they only give you that particular one in order to graph, all right? Okay, let's see what they do next. Oops. Okay, so they just go into your homework where you have some of these. Let's look at another one. Uh, let's look at number six just for kicks, who cares? All right, I'm gonna write it on plain paper though, because plain paper just works better. <laughs> So it's 18x, what, what is it, plus 4y equals 360, good. All right, we're going to graph this using the intercepts, okay? So that means first I need to make a what? Make a chart. Hold on, okay? So... Let's finish this problem first. That's what we're going to do there right now. We're going to make a chart. What? No. After this problem, we're not going to do anything until we get through this problem. Can y'all just focus for just a minute? Come on. We're going to make a chart. I'm going to choose how many values? What? Two values. X equals what? And y equals what? Zero. Okay, so there are my values. Then I'm going to solve twice. All right? Now, when I solve it, the first time I'm going to put x equals what number? Zero. zero. So 18 times 0 plus 4y equals 360. What's going to happen to the 18 times 0? We're gone, right? Who cares? And now I've got to get that four, by, that 4 away from the y. It's connected with multiplication, so I solve it by? Nine. Divide both sides by what? Four. 4. Over here, they divide away, and on this side, gives me what? 90. All right, 30, 360 divided by 4. 36 divided by 4 is 9, and then the 0. Okay. Now, I'm going to do the second one, but this time I'm not going to use x equals 0, but what? y equals zero. So 18x plus four times zero equals 360. The four times zero, who cares? I gotta move the 18. Well, both sides divided by 18, good, okay. Which gives me x equals what? Okay. Are they two distinct points? Yes. So. Then we can plot them. Zero, 090 means go to the right or left, how many? None. And up, how many? 90. 20, zero means go to the right. And up, how much? 
So I'm just making these values up. They'll, have, they'll give you an actual graph. And then you draw it all the way from edge to edge. Okay? They'll give you a, they'll give you a graph to plot it on. Okay.